when I don't feel like king in special events or uh, expeditions or sprints or contesting. Sometimes calling CQ or replying gets the same routine over and over. So here is a automated CQ uh, keyer and also a uh, it does a reply. Has a send button, a switch for the CQ message or the reply message, a potentiometer for speed. We can set it, uh, power it from 12 volts or 7 volts or directly from a computer or battery. For this exercise, it's going to start off using a relay output on this version of the prototype I'm going to hook up the alligator clips straight onto the keys as such this is going to be my operating mode because this isn't expected to to run all the time if I want to have a more robust connection I'll just hardwire it in but for this uh, type of thing I just want to have a clip on there in case I get tired and want to throw it on. Now the clips are on the straight key let's plug it in see how it works Okay, we're going to push the send. Okay, it says there's also the adjustment pot, so we can change the, the send speed. Right there, so we can make it a little bit faster or slower from 7 to 20. So pretty quick, see how much better it sounds. Okay, so we're going to send a reply now. That dit dit needs a little bit of work. So this is the extent of the for the functionality of it. It's meant to be simple. There's another spot here in case we wanted to add some multiple messages or do anything. It's not a self-recording device but the software was written to make it very easy to make a change to either the scaling of the uh, the software so that we could change the, the, the speed scale, speed range and also for the messaging. So each letter if we get up here, I'll have to screen to see this better. But each letter is actually a function called out into the Arduino code. So uh, all the letters are written in there in different functions for call out. So you can pretty much write any message you want. And all you have to do is add lines or take lines away. Just cut and paste exactly what's there. So very simple. Yeah, it's not going to be. Uh, something you can change on the fly in the field unless you have a computer with you but that's okay so thank you this first prototype does have one compromise the relay is rated for 28 volts DC the Kenwood 480 has a keying voltage of 3.2 volts however the 
Kenwood 820 has a keying voltage of 67 volts. The relay is going to wear out pretty quick, but the relays are cheap and easy, and that's why it's not part of the board. Uh, but we may hang around here for prototype number two and, and improve that and make it better. Maybe solid state. Thanks for watching. Now, the relay output was a, a good testing point. It served a lot of purposes. We were ensured it was totally isolated from the radio on and the keyer. Uh, but it made a lot of racket. We knew that the relay contacts have limited operation capabilities. Uh, they probably were out within uh, you know 50,000 operations or so and the rating on didn't match up it was uh, 28 volts DC I was putting 67 volts DC on it so one of the uh, things was to in improve this part of it now what I've done is the replaced the uh, relay with a solid state relay this is a LH1547 it's more or less an optocoupler it has uh, MOSFET drivers on the output they are rated for 400 volts 125 milliamps well within the ratings that the TS820 have on the keyer and other keyer inputs they're all high impedance inputs they draw a milliamp or two so this is a great switching thing and it wasn't very hard at all to insert it into the circuit you see it's, uh, it's more hooking it up just like an optocoupler and it uses the same outputs that I had for the relay card and just jumpered it right into the key so one of the nice things about it wow it's working there's no click clack or anything Before making the solid state relay circuit permanent onto the board, it looks like it's a viable solution. It does. It looks like uh, it meets all the specs, exceeds all the specs, and it's doing a nice job. Uh, one of the things I want to do is have some fun with it. I've changed the program slightly and changed the scaling of the the speed send. So uh, right now it's it's sending again at a faster speed. That looks pretty good. I have to wait for it now. I made it a little faster than before. The earlier speed setting was uh, around 20 words a minute for the maximum speed because it, at very best that's the best I could do. But since we put the solid state one on, I made it a little bit faster, maybe 40. Let's see how it sounds. I don't think that would have been so uh, easy with the key. Let's see that again. That was uh, pretty astounding. Cool. The last test we are going to do is what happens if we make a mistake hooking it up. Okay, I studied the solid state relay and it has a flyback diode on the output to protect it if you're driving a, a relay coil already built in. So what I did was uh, after checking that out uh, and so it should not be damaged or anything if you hook it up backwards. Uh, the, the thing was that it won't operate. So I have hooked it up backwards as a test after checking out to make sure it wasn't going to do any damage and it does what it says it's going to supposed to do is that uh, the flyback die is con making it conduct all the time because it's forward biased. That's expected behavior. In fact, uh, it's, it's a beneficial behavior. Uh, it'll make you think that your key is not working. At the same time, uh, it's protecting it. Uh, just to swap it around, know that's the behavior. So we're ready to go and install that, make it this uh, addition and change permanent. Live long and prosper. The solid state relay is now installed permanently on the board that is it right there and we can see by running that the 
by looking at it that the board itself is much more compact now. It's not nearly as noisy and rackety. Uh, it can do much higher speeds very effectively and uh, it'll last a lot longer too and it surpasses all the specs that it needs to, to interface to all the different radio uh, CW inputs that, that I have here. So we can have a little demo here. Well, that was pretty cool. Let's turn it up all the way that I have it reset for right now, just for fun. Do reply. Now, in my books, if I get uh, need to copy something like that, I might as well just go to automation. <laughs> totally. So here we're gonna turn it down just do one more round just for demonstration purposes turn it down to something a little bit slower and uh, see it in action so we went through some of the evolution of a design along with it uh, from a first concept mocked up of the first prototype and some things that I knew that I could do to make it work and then uh, made it better so it met all the specs and was more reliable and much better to use and so I think uh, the next step if there is a next step would be to repackage this I know that we could make it a lot smaller and maybe even embed it into the base underneath a key and that way uh, we could have a little package that's transportable and just fits everything, but uh, it met all the needs that uh, we had originally specified. So thanks very much, and I hope you have good luck on a, on a bands, good DX, and 73.